Hi everyone, it's Ken again with another UBM NTV question. So today we are going to be covering the difference between a UBM transaction and a UBM sequence item. Uh, there are different variants of these questions that can come up where the interviewer can ask you to define what a sequence item is or a what a UBM transaction is. And on top of it, uh, there could be other questions like why we don't use UBM transactions anymore, or why we use uh, UBM sequence item for any kind of transactions or use the de defined transactions that we have. Once we um, go over the video, you should be able to answer these questions along with the differences between the transaction and a sequence item. So what exactly is a UBM transaction? So UBM transaction is something that it is driven or um, is derived from or extends from a UBM object. Um, on top of the UBM object class, it adds um, a few um, interfaces, which include uh, the timing and the recording interfaces. And uh, additional properties are added, which include uh, transaction reconfiguration, including the transaction ID, timestamp, um, notification uh, events, etc. Uh, this is sort of like something from an old school methodology and it's since been deprecated. Um, anytime you have a user defined transaction, um, going forward in UVM, we do not um, extend from a UVM transaction class anymore. Instead, we use a subtype of a UVM transaction which is the UVM sequence item. All right, let's see what a UVM sequence item is. So UVM sequence item extends from the UVM transaction, of course, which ultimately then goes to a UVM object. Then this is, of course, the preferred way as the, so this is the preferred way for any user defined class transaction essentially. So uh, whenever we have a user-defined transaction, we always extend it from a UVM sequence item now. Then um, what does it add? It adds something called a sequence ID, which is really helpful in routing the response uh, back to the correct sequence. So, so when you send something from the sequence or the sequence to the driver, that's called a request. And then when something is returned, based off of that request, it's called a response. And uh, a response is something that's tied to a request. And sequence ID sort of like ensures um, that the sequencer will route the response back to the right sequence. Because these days we have really complicated um, or multitudes of sequences running in parallel or with different priorities on the same sequencer. And to route it to the right sequence, the response, you need the sequence ID. Then, um, what are some of the other uses? Um, it also uses the transaction ID um, to basically correlate various requests and their responses. Uh, then, the other advantage of a UVM sequence item is that with really minimal effort, you can use it directly to sort of like um, use the whole transaction level modeling, um, the, 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 the basis of UVM essentially to send and receive request and response from the sequence, sequencer, driver, dot, and all the way back to the sequence. Um, so uh, this is really important um, uh, because this just ties directly into a UVM sequence, sequencer, UVM driver, and um, like basically also uh, sending it back from the dot driver sequencer and the sequence, the response. So for all of that, we use UVM sequence item. So in summary, UVM transaction is an obsolete old methodology, which is not used anymore. Uh, as it has no context of who the parent sequence is or wh whether it's wh whether a particular transaction is part of a group of transactions. Whereas um, 
on the side of the on the other side you have the UVM sequence item with uh, an added advantage of having a sequence ID. Um, it's actually aware what the related or interrelated um, transactions are, um, which which ultimately is known as a UVM sequence, and it extends from UVM sequence item. So that's about it. And so if um, you are able to remember this slide, you should be able to answer any question that's so like asked about what the differences between the two are, what is the preferred methodology, and why a UVM transaction is something that is obsolete now. All right, guys, I'll see you in my next video. Thank you so much.